running an existing system does not change it. It's just like I had some friends that wanted to change the education system. They went and did their studies and become a school teacher. They last a very short period of time because they realized, and I said to them before they did it, I said, it's, it's honorable that you want to do that. But it's very hard to change the system from the inside out. And many teachers would know this. They quit teaching or get frustrated because it's hard to change the education system from the inside. I'm focused on changing the education system, making a 21st century modern day education system worldwide, including this country, from the outside. Same with politics, folks. The way that you change it is this. We have an outdated political system that, yeah, has served as well to a certain degree. People say, why change what works? Well, that is BS. If that was the philosophy, then our countries would never evolve. Humanity would have never evolved. You say, oh, what worked 200 years ago? Let, if it works, let's not change it. You should improve things daily. If you're not improving as a person, if you're not improving your company as a company, you're not improving your country, so we need to evolve the political system. And my suggestion is this. The, all the effort to go into becoming elected as a politician, that amount of effort, and you say, well, why don't we create a third credible party, a political party in this country? Well, as Bob Catter, you know, a few others have done that. One Nation tried to do that. Did it really get anywhere? The effort to even do that, it's very difficult. There's basically a monopoly on the political parties of the coalition and Labour. So that's very difficult to do as well. Why not just go above that to the higher level and say, let's create a debate in this country about creating a better political system? Let me ask you this question. Why do we have political parties whatsoever? Do we need political parties? I would say eliminate them. I think people should be voted, politicians should be voted on the quality of their policies, not towing the party line. Think about it. All politicians should be independents, but true independents. They should be able to cross the floor, back and forth, based upon the policies. See, let's think about it. If you vote one political party, that you might agree with some of their policies, but do you agree with them all? Too bad if you don't agree with them all, you don't get a choice because they take it as a mandate. For instance, in the last election, we said clearly, the majority of people, there'll be no, no to carbon tax. Well, someone said they will never have a carbon tax if they're elected. When they become elected, they lied to the public and they introduced a carbon tax. Then they had the hide in this country to go around running newspaper adverts paid for by the taxpayer to say yes to carbon tax. What do you mean say yes? We already said no at the election. Now you're saying, oh, we have a choice to say yes or no. We didn't have a choice to say yes or no. We, oh, what if we want to say yes or no? Where do we say? There was no choice. Say yes to carbon tax as if the voters, the people were being given a choice. They weren't given a choice. They were given the choice and said no. Then after that, they're told, oh, say yes. You don't have a choice. You've got a carbon tax for your life or not. Did the Australian people vote that policy into power? No, they voted against it. But what do we have? by deceptive, misleading politicians, you have a effectively inept political system. I suggest change it. So eliminate political parties. Why toe the party line? You should elect politicians based on policies. Here's what I want to suggest. With technology these days, with the internet, qualified voters could easily choose to vote via online technology for say, the top five or six major policies a year. Any smaller policies, which are still important, could be decided upon by the elected politicians. But for the top five or six policies a year, imagine this, they went out to Australians now and said, okay, qualified voters, vote online. Do you want to spend $36 billion on a national broadband network or do you want to consider the other options, maybe $10 billion, better value for money? Choose, boom, we have a choice. Do you want a carbon tax? Allow the voters online to vote for a policy, carbon tax or no carbon tax. We know what the answer is. No carbon tax, the majority of people. So let's have that power to vote on policies because then you get a true dem democratic society where people have a choice based on policies and people that are educated about those policies where po politicians can't bribe, they can't deceive because those 30% of qualified voters know what the facts are. That, my folks, I suggest as just some ways that could dramatically improve this country. Now, when you throw ideas out there, not all the ideas will work. That's ideas are for debating, ideas are for looking at, ideas are thinking outside the box to say, how do we take the status quo from here to here and continually evolve and improve this country? And they're just some ideas. I wrote a, an article recently on 21 ways to improve this country. I'm sure there's many other ways out there. I hope that I've educated you some, a little bit at least on what are ways to improve this country. There's many other ways I'll talk to you in future episodes of State of Affairs of what I think will make a significant difference to this country. I encourage you, 
as an individual taxpayer, as a citizen of this great country, to get educated, to be passionate about this country and feel that you have a way to contribute. And we, together, as a collective group of people in the future, can change and improve the quality of this nation. Talk to you soon.